So welcome to Paris with Ekev. I'm, ab I'm here on the balcony of Livnot in Tzfat and I'm delighted to have with me uh, the one and only Aaron Botzer. And he is uh, the uh, head of Livnot, the Libanot, which we're going to speak to about in a moment. But Aaron, how did you end up coming to Tzfat? I just heard about Tzfat and came here and fell in love with it and said this is where I want to live. And. Uh, so I lived here for a year and then I said I want to live here for my whole life and I... What year this, was that? This was in 1974 or 5. And uh, I decided I wanted to restore a, what they call a ruin, which is what I did. I purchased a ruin, that, uh, a huge house. It was actually uh, three units, houses around the courtyard, which no one wanted. I paid for it, what I earned in one summer, 17 years old, moving furniture. I bought a whole house here that now I rent out five apartments, five units to it. And, uh, and that's how I came here. And uh, Leave Note was a continuation of that, that Tzfat's a place where people would always come. Uh, what people did then, there wasn't birth rate, but people did then, they went to Kibbutzopan. And Kibbutz Opan, which was the Jewish experience, uh, this was the Jewish experience that, that was offered. And a lot of people wanted more. They wanted something to taste Judaism. So the only thing around was, was Or Sameach. This is before Aish was here. Right. And so people would, a lot of people would go to Or Sameach for two hours and say, this isn't for me. And, uh, too, too, too religious. It's, it's too, it's too, you know, this is what I'm going to look like in another month. Are you kidding? <laughs> and uh, so there is nothing. And there was I nothing would, in between. And I would say until today, 43 years or 47 years later, there still isn't anything else where you can really come to have an intense Jewish experience, a spiritual experience, where you're not expected or hoped to or being... Uh, pushed into becoming from and that's why you started and that's note? why I started leave note that's why leave note exists if what leave year note did you start leave note? in 1980 and uh, I actually worked for another organization beforehand called Gesher mm. which is bridging the gap between religious and non-religious in it's Israel great, great organization. and I ran it in Sfat in order to uh, in order to create leave note leave note because I had no experience in running anything and no experience in dealing with Israel bureaucracy. So I took this job with Gesher and uh, and I was there for a year. Livnot is, a, is an icon in Sfat. I mean, I can't imagine what Sfat would be like without Livnot. Tell us what the, 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 the main objectives of Livnot and what you've managed to do in the, in the last uh, 20 years. in their DNA something that's from walking the land because you're 3,000 years ago <coughs> um, our ancestors lived here, breathed here walked the land worked the land and there's something, you know, like if you were if you were Swedish, you'd have blonde hair and blue eyes <coughs> uh, if you're Jewish your neshama is, is Hold to something in this land, mm -hmm. and I hear this from part. I hear this actually. This Shabbat, we had 60 participants on birthright. They're here for eight weeks. This was their spiritual Shabbat. This is that, and I heard we sat around in the final circle right here afterwards. And I heard it a few times. Well, one person actually said that 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 I discovered something inside that I was looking for that I didn't know existed. So that's what we tried to do. So the parsha, the parsha very much relates to that. The parsha. Says, um, Should I just do it in English? Yeah. No, no, I think the Hebrew is good. Oh, okay. Hebrew and so, so good. the land that, that you're coming to is to, to inherit, uh, it's not like Egypt that you came from. Uh, like a land that you, that, that you, you, um, irrigated and 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 and
the garden just grows at your feet. Aretz asher otem ovrim shama lirista eretz harim. The land that you're coming to inherit is a land of <coughs> mountains, mountains, of valleys, of valleys, and um, uh, of uh, harim or bikaot lematal hashamayim tishtemayim. And from the the water, the the rain from heaven, you shall drink. Eretz asher Hashem elokecha doreshota tamid. That it's a land that God keeps an eye on it all the time. And from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And then it goes into the period of the Shema. And so what does this mean? Uh, we all come from Galut. You know, we're all coming back from Galut. And Galut like Mitzrayim is the uh, epitome of Galut, where what does it mean? It's fed everything the Nile runs through, and all year round is is uh, is water, and you know you just have to open up a, a dig a ditch and water comes in. In in Israel, what does it mean that God is always watching over this place? That this place has a unique, has an intrinsic relationship with Hashem all the time. All the time Hashem is looking looking at the at at uh, what's happening here. A deeper uh, consciousness of God's presence. That that there is a the, the difference is in Egypt there's water all year round. Here it's dependent on the Shemayim. It's dependent on we have Bikoot, we have Mayanot. Talks about the Mayanot in the parsha. That the, what's the Mayan? You know, if there's no rain, there's no Mayan either. There's no springs. The water here comes from the earth. It comes from the, it only if it rains. And does it rain as a natural phenomena? No. It rains uh, uh, according to um, to our, our to, to our to our moral behavior and our prayers. That's why it rains, and uh, and we have to believe that. And. And therefore, the relationship with the Kadosh Buhu is a special relationship. Remember, this is the Holy Land. This is the Holy Land for all the people, not just for Jews. This is the Holy Land. And uh, why is the Holy Land? First of all, there's a lot of reasons that it's the Holy Land, because this is the area that agriculture develops. When you develop agriculture, you start praying for rain, because you, you need the rain. And so a whole, the, the whole relationship with Hashem developed right here. In addition to that, what I said before, our DNA is really revolving around this land, where our ancestors worked the land, where our ancestors fought in this land. You, know? you actually take uh, students to come on you, not to work the land. Is that right? Yeah, but to work the land, we take people who have very little background. So that's who we're good with. We're also mainly good with 21 and above when people are, spoke, are beginning to ask questions about what meaning is in life. That's what we deal with. That's what happens to these students when they come and work the land? Because this is probably the first time they've ever done that. And yeah. to do it in the Holy Land yeah. so, is something so, very special. So the work is, I mean, at the beginning we used to work a lot. We still work. We did, uh, you know, we've done amazing, huge projects. We, two years we did 220 bomb shelters in the north wow. uh, with a crew of 25 Israelis who were mostly unemployed in Kiryat Shmona and in Tzfat. We did 220 bomb shelters all together. So most of the bomb shelters in Mor Chaim, they weren't, they were, existed. There was a shell. There was no floor. There was no pumping. There was no electricity. So this is what we did in Kirat and in Tzfat, is we had, for two years, we had uh, a crew of Israelis. And then we, uh, we had thousands of volunteers coming and working on two-week programs and just coming for a few hours to do this. And this is one thing we did in Tzfat. Most of the parks and terraces we built, uh, they used to have our sign, but people took down the signs over the, the period. Uh, the alleyways, most of them, we had a lot to build with it, to do with it. But, um, um, Did you notice the difference in the people's personality and aura when they actually came and worked the land? Yeah, but you put a lot of emphasis on working. Uh -huh. Leave notes, main thing isn't working. If anything, it's hiking. We have a book. Uh, called uh, uh, learning under a tree, where where we we deal with uh, a lot of plants and animals 
of learning how I become a better person from that. And, uh, and uh, that, that's the main emphasis, is learning values, learning that I can be a better person, learning to work on myself. The, the, we do chevuta uh, with a group of individuals. We try to get individuals, like for every meal on Shabbat, two or three individuals to do what we call wows, words of wisdom, mm -hmm. which is about Jewish values. Mm -hmm. A lot of times things that they always believed in, but just didn't know it was Jewish with Jewish sources. Right. That their <coughs> the, uh, that their ancestors also were asking the same questions and, and teaching the same values. So that's something very important. But the main thing to leave note is is this spiritual experience. It's spiritual, not necessarily meditating on my belly button at all. But but there's something in Tzfat. Tzfat is one of the four holy cities. Right? There's four holy cities. The Tzfat is Ruach, and Jerusalem is fire, and Hebron is, is, is and yeah, and, and fire is, is and the and fire is is Jerusalem, and earth is uh, I'm, I'm sorry, earth is, is, is Hebron, Hebron, and it's water Tiberia. is Tiberia. So I'll speak about that in a second when we walk through the tunnels. But uh, Tzfat is the era. Now, why is Tzfat? Here and why is Tzfat a holy city? I mean, Tzfat, you know, before uh, the 16th century, no, no one knew about Tzfat. But all of a sudden, the 16th century, Tzfat became the spiritual center of the Jewish world. There's never been a time in, in, in uh, that one place had so many hachamim and so many uh, and so 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 much new things happening in Judaism, like all of almost all of the Friday night services right here. We do a Shab Kabbalah Shabbat, I've which is central. I've heard you, because I used to live down there, and I used to see our, our tens Kabbalah of people Shabbat here. Our Kabbalah Shabbat is central to the program. Right. We arrange a special sunset every Kabbalah Shabbat. Right. We had 60 people here, the last four Shabbatot. 60 people, each one for the first Shabbat, for many of them in their life. Wow. And they see, and it completely alters everything, the whole way they look at their Judaism. Mm -hmm. These are people who were here for eight weeks, and every Shabbat they go to a discotheque in the sea. And they don't have anything to do with Judaism. And that's really the best. That's what we're all about. And uh, anyways, why did the Jews come here from, why is this a holy city? Because after the expulsion from Spain in 1492, the great Jews come, like, like the El Sheikh came. Yeah, the El Sheikh and, uh, yeah, of and, uh, and, and, and the Ari, of course. And, uh, and one reason Carol. why they came is it's close to the grave of Rabbi Shogu Yochai, who, according to a tradition, wrote the Zohar. Another reason, yeah. But another reason they came is for, why didn't they go to Meron? Because in Meron there weren't any Jews. In Tzfat there was a Jewish community that was probably here for the last two thousand years that never left Mustaravim. In fact, when uh, when when the new Olim came from Spain and the old timers who were, never left, and there was a lot of there was a, not from Turkey from from, from Tzfat. That never left Spot, that lived ah, in Spot. Never left Spot. That right. lived in Spot. That, well, there's a family still here, there's a couple families still here that claim that they never left Spot. One of them is in Yubdaven in the Arias Faradi, right? Yes. So the Gabai there, Eli Levi, yeah. he's, he's he's family with uh, with Zinati in Pekin, who never left, right? So he, there's other people. Not only that, there's a family in Spot who claim that. Tzfat, 2,000 years ago, after the destruction of the temple, Tzfat was uh, one of the places that we read last week in Tisha B'Av of the, the uh, uh, Mishmaot, Mishmaot HaKehuna. And there are 24 Mishmaot, and there are 18 cities that the Kohanim, after the destruction of the temple, came to. And Tzfat had, had two of the cities, two of the Mishmaot, two of the families, Kohanim's families. There's a family in Tzfat that claims that they're from Mishpachat Fashcho, and one of the families, the Kohanis, the families that came here, and every, when they were here, every two weeks, they, and every, the tradition was, was they'd go for two weeks a year. When it was their time to go to Jerusalem, then they would have a big uh, festival. Wow. You know, it's fun. Anyways, another reason I came here, because the main industry, and one of the main industries that the Jews brought with them was the textile, was wool producing. And they use Nachalmud, which is the most beautiful place in the country. They use that for building water uh, mills to be able to work the wool. And uh, so they could meet Panes. Everybody in Sfat worked. Almost everybody worked. 
uh, although not everybody, because there were discussions about some people being exempt from taxes because they learned all the time, but most people, the Ari, Yosef Kao, they, they, they were businessmen. Yeah. They, they, they were. And, uh, and so that was very central to making uh, Tzfat into a place where you could have six, 7,000 Jews here. You know, all in the old city, by the way. It's all in the old city. What's in the DNA? When I believe, and I, you know, I see this, that, that something that's so deep in us, our connection to the land, is that our nishamot, when it comes time for Sukkot, we feel that there's, it's gonna rain. In, our nishama feels a, the yearning for rain. And because, uh, you know, we're connected to the seasons, to the, mm. to the sun. By the way, we're also connected to the moon mm. because, you know, the moon has also a lot of influence on the earth. How does it influence the earth? With the tide. With the tides. What Wind. are you made of? Water. Water. And also, we change with the moon. Right now, it's, it's Tu B'Av. Right now, it's Tu B'Av. It's a full moon. It's a holiday now. We're celebrating our connection and, and a lot of change happened. This is the... This is this is the holiday so the of love. And yeah, this is this is the holiday of love. This is a full moon. Something happens to us, and what we try to do in Judaism is connect our, is reconnect ourselves to that. Because at one time we were very connected. You know, now right. now you know that it's a it's a new moon because you, you they they say it in Shabbat before, but people feel it. People used to feel it. When there was no electricity, the moon was the main light source, so you really yeah. knew what the moon was doing every okay. day. So I suggest that we go down. Okay. I'd like to see if we can go through the Hashra, but I think we have a birthright group here okay. now. Thank uh, you. The Ignot is mainly a program of Shabbatonim and week programs and four-week programs, but in addition to that, we, we purchased property, which we'll go to in a couple minutes, uh, 30 years ago that we discovered a whole underground city now to get there from here we go we made a tunnel that we go uh, uh, seven levels underground what we did is we took underneath every house in Tzfat or in the Middle East you have to have two things you need a water cistern and you need a, a, a storeroom for, for food so what we did is we just opened up one to the other in order to create a tunnel to get to the Beit HaKachal, which we call the 16th century village. We're going to go through the tunnels, uh, which, we, which we created them about six years ago. But recently, in the last few, uh, over the last year, we've been working and now it's almost finished. It's, uh, being, it's in trial. I, I, an encounter with four Kabbalists from 500 years ago. Uh, you meet uh, the Ari, who is fire, Yosef Kao, who is Adama, Shlomo Alkovitz, who is wind, and Francisca Sara, that she was a Kabbalist in the time of the Ari, a prophetess. And uh, Chaim Vital, the Ari student, writes about her, and he tells a story, and that story of how she saved someone's life because she saw the future is told on water here. It's, you see the story in water, but it's a lot of lights and, and music and all kinds of things. It's a 15-minute uh, experience. We're not going to do it now, uh, but everyone's invited to do it. And this is the room of the Ari, and he talks about spreading the light. And at the end, there's a woman here who lights candles, and the whole wall is lit up from her lighting the candles, because that's the role that we have. But it talks about the Ari here. The Ari is speaking to you. So this you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to hear, but you hear Le Chadodi, and then there's a microphone where you add your voice to, to all the voices that were here before. This is in a holy apple field. This is actually uh, apple tree branches. In this room, there's actually an, an apple tree. And, and when, when, you, when it's working, when, when it's not turned on now, the, the sound might show up, but you see the sunset here. But this is actually an apple tree. Um, Great lighting effects.
Now we're going to go down to the water cisterns. These were storerooms, and we opened this all up. It wasn't opened up, but we went through um, through the mountain to create the passageways, and we built the stairs and built the, the arches that we're going through. This was a, these were water systems. The idea of the mirrors, by the way, is, is when you look in the mirror, you see the person next to you. You see the other. That's the purpose of it, not to look at yourself, not to see yourself all the time. Uh -huh. uh, and here, uh, Francis Sarah, she tells a story about um, about uh, uh, how she actually uh, prevented, she saw the future uh, in people's faces. And so there's a story about it that you listen to while you're coming down. Right. And then uh, the story is actually seen on the water. You see the story on the water. Is that right? I hope you're going to do this. I did, I did it once. It was fascinating. I mean, you brought Hollywood into, or Disneyland into, uh, into Tzfat. This is, uh, this is Yosef Kao. Yosef Kao, we have a quote of Yosef Kao, which is about four minutes long. And you can't believe this is Yosef Kao. He talks about how the Jews must come back to the land of Israel after 1,500 years and come and walk the land and hug the trees and, uh, and, and take the dirt and build from it. And uh, uh, Amazing. Yeah. Very relevant to today. Well, what a maze this is. So this is what we call Beta Kahal. It goes to the tree there. Right. And uh, we purchased this for pennies uh, 35 years ago or so. This used to look like this, where no one had any idea what this was. No one wanted it. When I came to Tzvah 47 years ago, I paid nothing for my house because no one, no one wanted to live here. It was all old people and their kids didn't want to live in Tzfat. And we've not bought this. We tried to buy it for 10 years and the government wouldn't sell it to us, but no one wanted it. And then when we bought it, everyone said, just, uh, just come in with a bulldozer and knock it down. But we insisted on digging and we found interesting things. What do you think this whole area was used as? Well, this was, the, this was actually probably the community center of the 16th century. But see, you could hear here water. Yeah. You hear? So the water used to go through the, in the, when they built the alleyways, they built pipes inside of it that fed the cisterns. We have another five cisterns here. Yeah. We went through three. So this is, this was probably a bathhouse and this is a mikvah. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to tell me one word about the Ari mikvah? Go on. One word. About the Ari, Ari mikvah. Cold. 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 <laughs> yeah. So the Ari's mother wrote a letter to Chaim Vital and asked him not to let the Ari go to cold water mikvah because he was sick all the time. Uh -huh. He died at the age of 38. Uh -huh. But apparently in Tzfat, there was one mikvah that was heated. Where's that? Here. Here. How was it heated? We found a pile of volcanic rocks. Oh. And what did they do with the volcanic rock? They put it in the sun? Put it in an oven. Uh, the oven. And where's the oven? Under your feet. Oh. This was the bakery of Tzfat. Right. This was the bakery of Tzfat until a hundred years ago. This was the major bakery, the central bakery of the Spanish Quarter. 
And uh, this we found. Now, no one knew this existed. And everyone said, just go in with a bulldozer and take it down. And we insisted on uh, digging it out Good bucket by bucket. <laughs> and now, the piano is here because when we open up officially, I mean, we've already done it, uh, when you meet, after you met virtually the four Kabbalists, here you're going to meet them actually. So Shlomo Alkabitz is going to be playing the piano. There's over 1,500 tunes for the Hadudi, mm -hmm. and there's, there's Yadid Nefesh, and Yari Bon, and there's all these Sfat songs that you know, people can hear. You'll meet, you'll meet the Ari, who has four instruments of the four uh, uh, elements that the world was created in. I want to go through the bakery. We're going to go bother them for a second. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, That's and fine. This is a birthright group. Now, we have groups here all the time. We have all kinds of, of uh, uh, workshops all the time. Uh, sometimes three workshops going on at the same time. We usually have challah here. Yeah, we make big shot challah. And uh, we have music and meditation and Kabbalistic art. And, uh, Amazing. Actually, be in that kind of relationship. All of the other questions just yeah. yeah, we're 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 done. Yeah, we're we're done. Oh, just I hope he told you we have a program in another two weeks. There's a Claysmere festival. I did the totally right. yeah, this month for Shabbatonim. Sixty people from all over every time. Okay, so my friends, um, we're about to head out. Any last questions? Thanks for this. Thank you. Was this interesting? Yes. Yeah. 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 But uh, here there's another, there's an entrance to the sister. Here's another sister. There's a sister that's seven meters deep. Oh, wow. But there's rooms, we found like uh, ten rooms. Another five sisters. Here, here just, you want to see something? Stand here. Yeah. Now we bought this to build a campus. So we own, that building is not ours, but we own to the end of that building. Right. Is, is our property. Right. And we want to build, uh, living right now we have room for 90 people. We have two campuses. Wow. And I mean, for birthright, we can have 60 people at a time. Because they have all kinds of regulations. And we want to build for another 40, 50 people here. And Amazing. do programs. We want to have, we want SWAT to be, uh, to be uh, the center of spirituality for the Jewish people. Amazing. There's a lot of organizations in Sfada, great things happening, and we're one of them, and we want everyone to work together, and, uh, but we have the tunnels and the kahal. The kahal is declared a national heritage site, and that's what we're trying to do, is make it into a national heritage site. Amazing. And so everyone can that's connect to their heritage. That's the kahal. Okay. The purpose of Leave Note is to get people to take steps in their life to change. Right. Uh, we believe that, uh, and this is maybe what you could say is, you know, at, at the beginning of a program, I, I have very little to do with running a program, but sometimes I, I introduce them to Tzfat and to, uh, I, I'm a tour guide, and sometimes I introduce them to Tzfat as a spiritual center, and I'm the last person to be spiritual. But I definitely believe in I because I see all the time people say this was a spiritual experience. And I say this to them, that you're going to, it's 36 hours from now, after Shabbat, you're going to say, most of you, and they do, say this was a spiritual experience. And what makes it spiritual? That, that something happens here that just doesn't happen. And maybe it's not just it happens, just we see it happen. It happens every place. But in Tzfat, you see it happen. You notice it. What? You notice it. You notice it. And what we say is that every person that you meet is a is an angel it can be an angel you have to you have to see that you have to let that happen 
and, uh, and, and every step that you take, you have two choices. You could either take this way, which is easy for me or best for me, or you take the step that's not the easiest or not necessarily the best. And if you want to build yourself into a better person, that's the way you take. That's how you build yourself. So thank you, Aaron, for that beautiful tour. Um, really enjoyed it. And uh, I highly recommend anybody who's coming to the site to actually experience it in full with all the audio-visual effects because it's quite dramatic. Oh. Since yeah. in this parsha we have a house of a Savata ah. So I'll take a you know, I'll give a blessing. I happen to be a Kohen. Oh. So I give uh, too many times I'm the only Kohen in Abu Hav. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, uh, so I want to bless everyone that they should have uh, fulfillment and peace and uh, Shalom Bayit and a little bit of Tzfat to take in from the stones of Tzfat which absorb the Chuchmah and the Nigunim and the wisdom from 500 years ago and it stayed right here and come back and experience a little bit of, of uh, taking it off the rocks and uh, taking it with you home. Uh, Amen. Beautiful blessing. And I, what I also wish you uh, in this beautiful and ambitious uh, um, project of making this uh, really a center for people to come and experience. And uh, we just saw you know, a whole group of teenagers here, in 20s, and you can see that, that this sort of experience really will have an effect on their lives permanently. So it's rather shame you should it's be successful with that. And I have an Akarat to talk to say to you because you were the first person to invite me for Friday night dinner when I first came to Tzfat. So I always will remember that. Thank you for, for you and to your wife. For that, that's what, how the note started, by the way. Huh. As we would invite, we'd see these people who came to Israel to go to Kibbutz. They'd come to Tzfat with a backpack. And we'd invite them in for a meal. And then we realized that they really need something like this, not just come to my house. Yes. And, but there had to be a program to make it happen so they could all experience. And by the way, I've been here almost 50 years, and we still do it. We still pick people off the street almost every Shabbat. And amazing, fascinating stories. There's nothing more divine than the mitzvah of Achna Satochim. Really, kolakavot. Okay, thank you.